A quick recap of the adjustments that we discussed so far. First, we did personal versus business income tax. What did we say in case of income tax? If income tax has been paid by the business in case of a sole proprietor, in case of a sole proprietor, if income tax has been paid, such income tax would be treated as drawings and not as expense. This is because income tax authorities will not differentiate between the income of the sole proprietorship and the income of the firm. So, if the business pays income tax, then it is treated as drawings as a personal expense of the proprietor. However, in case of a partnership, in case of a partnership, such income tax, if it is paid, it may be treated as an expense in order to arrive at the profits of the business, which would be divided among the partners in some agreed ratio. So in a partnership, it would be treated as expense. But in case of a sole proprietorship, income tax, personal income tax paid would be treated as drawings. Next, we discussed the accrual concept. What did we say under the accrual concept? Under the accrual concept, we came up with four terms with respect to expenses. We had outstanding expense and prepaid expense. Prepaid expense. What is outstanding expense? It is a liability because we have a liability to pay this. Prepaid expense, on the other hand, is an asset because services were receivable. At the year end, we have to make these adjustments. We have to ensure that all expenses for the year are brought into the books. Anything outstanding included, it is a liability which we have not paid. At the same time, if we have paid anything for the next year, for future periods, we remove that from the expense and show only the relevant expense for the particular year. The expense paid in advance or prepaid expense is shown as an asset in the balance sheet. Similarly, with respect to income, we might have accrued income or we might have income received in advance. Income received in advance. What is income received in advance? This is a liability. Why is it a liability? Because we have received money, not rendered services. Now we are liable to render those services. At the same time, accrued income is what is an asset. Why is it an asset? Because it is an receivable. We have earned the income, but we have not yet received it. So all incomes for the current year need to be brought into the books. <coughs> If we have earned but not received, it should come in. If we have received income in advance, we should remove that and show it as a liability in the balance sheet. Next, we discussed manager's commission and how to compute commission when uh, how to commute compute commission when it is based on the profits as a percentage of the profits. Usually, this is given to managers in order to give them an incentive to increase the profits of the business. Such commission, we had discussed, may be a percentage on the profits before charging the commission or a percentage of the profits after charging the commission. Next, we discussed provision for bad debts. We discuss bad debts and provision for bad debts. Bad debt is an amount which is to be recovered, which is to, which was receivable, but which we know that we will no longer be getting, be able to collect. This amount is written off as a bad debt. When we expect these bad debts to come in the future, expect any, uh, any debt to be doubtful, then we create a provision for this doubtful debt. <clears throat> we, we looked at accounting entries with respect to bad debts, with respect to provision for bad debts. This provision is created by debiting profit and loss account and creating a provision account with a credit balance. How is it shown in the balance sheet? As a deduction from debtors. Debtors less provision. For doubtful debts. 
Similarly, we have something called a provision for discount on debtors. Discount on debtors is also an expense. When we expect some of the debtors to avail of a discount in future, we may as well provide for this loss, this future expense. We do that by saying profit and loss account debit to provision for discount on debtors. Profit and loss account debit to provision for discount on debtors. How is it shown in the balance sheet? Again, by deducting it. Less provision for discount. When it is taken as a percentage, it is taken as a percentage on this amount after reducing the provision for doubtful debts. <clears throat> we also discussed provision for discount on creditors, which is actually taking a uh, making a provision or acknowledging a receipt which is only expected in the future. It is the only provision which would have a debit balance. The entry is to credit profit and loss account and debit provision for discount on credit creditors. It violates the concept of conservatism and is hardly used in practice.